Hello and welcome back. This will be now our part 3 of the solution of a transportation problem, maximization case. In the previous two lectures, we first derived the opportunity loss matrix by subtracting all the per unit amounts of profit from the highest one. Then in the second lecture, we obtain the initial solution by VAM, Vogel's approximation method. And this is the statement showing profit at this stage. That means if we take initial solution as the final solution, the profit may be of Rs. 15,180. Remember, these are the opportunity losses. So to calculate the total profit, we have to multiply the units of allocation with the per unit amount of profit which is available from the matrix given in the question, the transportation table given in the question. Now, how can we take this as a final solution? No, we our aim is to reach the optimal solution. So first we have to check whether this is optimal solution or not. Before that we have to check the degeneracy, whether the solution is degenerate or not, the ring condition is satisfied or not. We have 4 columns and 3 rows, 4 plus 3 minus 1, 7, that is called ring condition, RIM. And number of cells with allocation must be 6 or more. There are 6 cells with allocation, that means the RIM ring condition is satisfied. So now we can check the optimality of this solution. The question is how to check the optimality. To check the optimality we use the dual of the transportation problem. For that purpose we add one more column to the solution that is titled as U, I and one more row that is titled as V, J. To begin with this path of duality to check the optimality first we have to take zero rather value of any one of the u or any one of the v's as zero according to our choice there are so many suggestions but i prefer to suggest you that take zero for any one U or V which has the maximum proportion of occupied cells in the row or column. See in this row only 1 against 4 is occupied 0.25 or 25%. Here 2 against 4 so 50% cells are occupied. Here 3 against 4 so 75% cells are occupied. In this column 1 out of 3, 1 third or 33% are occupied. In this case, 3 out of 300% cells are occupied. This is the ideal place to take 0. Though the authors of various reference books use the term arbitrarily. But some rational approach should be there. That's why I am suggesting this technique. Here 1 out of 3, here also 1 out of 3. So, this column has 100% cells with allocation. So, I personally suggest to select this column and to place 0 as V2. Yes, J is 1, 2, 3, 4. Here I is 1, 2, 3. Now, what? On the basis of this 0 and all the allocated cells, we can find the remaining values of U as well as V. How? This is the interrelationship between C. C stands for transportation cost, but in this case C stands for opportunity loss. Okay, C i a equals to U i plus V j. This is the interrelationship. On the basis of this formula, we can derive these two formula. If we want to find U, that will be C minus V and if we want to find V, that will be C minus U. Now we have one value of V. Zero. Any one value of V or U can be taken as zero that we have discussed earlier. Now these three occupied cells can be used to find the three values, respective values of U. C minus V equals to U. Yes, second formula. C, 7 minus V, 0 equals to U. So U1 will be 7. C, 18 minus V, 0. So U2 will be 18. C minus V, 22 minus 0. U3 will be 22. Now, remaining values 
values of V can be found in the same way by using this formula V equals to C minus U. Take the occupied cell of the respective column, take its C, subtract the respective U, C 11 minus U 22, therefore V1 is minus 11. In this column, the occupied cell is this one, C 14 minus U 22, so V3 comes to minus 8. And in this column, occupied cell is here, C7 minus U18, so V4 comes to minus 11. Don't bother about the positive or negative values of U or V. That is a natural thing. But just be alert where there is a negative sign. Okay, now we have U's and V's. What are the uses or what can we do with the help of this U, I and VJ values? We can check the optimality. We found U and V on the basis of the occupied cells. Now it is turn of the role of unoccupied cells or empty cells. For each and every empty cell, we need to calculate D. And what is D? D is also based on the same formula. D equals to C minus U plus V. And for this relationship, the right angle relationship should be maintained. C relevant U and relevant V. This is C11 and it is nothing but total of UV and U1 and V1. But now for the empty cells, we are going to calculate the D values. This is D1A. Its C is 13 minus relevant U, U1 plus plus sign according to formula. V1 value is negative 1. So ultimately it is 13 minus 7 minus 11 minus 4. 13 plus 4 equals to 17. The Dij value for this cell is positive 17. As far as the Dij value is positive, don't bother about it. If any value of D is negative, then it is proved that this one is not an optimal solution. That means, if all the Dij values are positive, this is proved to be an optimal solution. Let's see what happens. Now second D1C. That will be 19 C. Minus sign according to formula U17. Plus sign according to formula. Relevant V is negative 8. So ultimately it will be 19. Minus 7 minus 8 minus 1. So 19 minus minus 1 is 19 plus 1. So it comes to 20. Another D value came to 20. It is also positive. Now the third D1B equals to it C is 0 minus sign according to formula. Relevant U is U17 plus sign according to formula. Relevant V is minus 11. So 0 minus minus 4 it comes to 0 plus 4 equals to 4. This D is also positive. <coughs> now, next row, the first is empty cell D2A. Its C is 17. Minus sign according to formula. Relevant U is U2, 18. Plus sign according to formula. Relevant V is minus 11. So 17 minus 18 minus 11 is 7. 17 minus 7 it is 10. So that value of D is also positive. In the same row, this one is also empty cell 2C, D2C. The value of C for this cell is 15 minus sign according to formula. Relevant U is U2, 18 plus sign according to formula. And relevant V is minus 8. So ultimately it is 15 minus 18 minus 8 is 10. So it comes to 5 and that is also positive. Positive 5. Now we have only one empty cell with us. If D, 
high J value for this cell also comes to be positive, then this will be proved as optimal solution. But if the DIJ value for this empty cell comes to negative, this will be proved that this is not an optimal solution. If the DIJ value comes to zero, then this will be one of the multiple or alternative optimal solutions. Let's see what happens. D3 D C is 5 minus sign according to formula relevant U is U3 22 plus sign according to formula and relevant V is minus 11. So it is my 5 minus 11. So it comes to minus 6. So we have with us one DIJ value as negative for this particular cell. That means this is not an optimal solution. If this is an sorry, this is a non-optimal solution, we have to move forward for optimality. What are the steps of optimality? We have to select this cell with the negative D value. That will be the starting point of closed loop and very simple rules for closed loop closed loop will be sorry we start from the cell with negative DIJ value it can move in any direction upper lower left right but to take the turn at the next stage it must be an occupied cell so if we go to this cell we cannot move any side because this is empty cell so we have to reach an occupied cell in such a way that from where we can go to another occupied cell and so on and ultimately we come back to this cell at the last so i prefer to go to this stage first right plus sign in this cell minus sign in this cell plus minus plus minus alternatively yes this is occupied we cannot move that side but we have to move this side and we have to come here only because this is empty cell this is also empty cell now it is turn off after minus plus sign now we can go upper side but in the upper side we have no other occupied cell to get another turn so we have to move backward now we have two directions, we can go here also and we can go here also, but we should not go here because from this cell we cannot go in any other direction because of empty cells. So the only option with us is to reach the point of origin and after plus this is turn of minus sign. The cells with plus signs and minus signs must be equal at each and every corner of the closed loop. Two plus signs and two negative signs. Now what? Very simple thing. Select the cells with minus sign, negative sign. Compare the quantity of allocation. The quantities of allocation 20 and 400. Select the lowest one, 20. Now what? This 20 is to be subtracted from the cells with negative sign and the same 20 is to be added to the cells with plus signs. So the thing will be like this. From this 400 we have to subtract 20 so it becomes 380. We have to subtract 20 from here it becomes 0. We have to add 20 here, so it becomes 20 from 0. And we have to add 20 to this cell also because it has positive sign, so it becomes 120. See, the total remains same. This is the modified allocation. And that's why this technique is known as modified allocation method, MODI method, and in India, in recent days, recent months, it is popularly known as Modi method, but it has no correlation with our respected Prime Minister. That's it. Thank you very much.